At the end of the lesson, you are expected to define Vidal basis function kernel, analyze the mathematical representation of Vidal basis function kernel, and appreciate the significance of Vidal basis function kernel. This lesson is not only important for machine learning, but it is also important for deep learning, especially when we talk about support vector machines, support vector regression, neural networks, then our understanding of a kernel function is very important. Before we continue, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button down there so that you will be able to be notified every time we have a new session. And please don't forget to hit that notification icon so that you will be updated of what's going on in this channel. You can enjoy our free and exciting data science courses like Machine Learning Essentials, Deep Learning Mathematics, the different data science tips, the different data science algorithms, and a lot more. Give this video a thumbs up and share this with your friends. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about redial basis function. But before we continue to understanding this kind of function, it is very significant first to understand the concept of kernel function so that we would be able to properly understand the redial basis function or the RBF for short. So what is a kernel function? A kernel function is actually used to transform our n dimensional input to an m dimensional input so here we have the n and the m so from n going to an m this usually happens in higher dimensional spaces wherein m is much higher than n so what we usually do here is that we find the dot product and this kind of dot product is usually applied when we are in a situation where there is higher dimensional spaces. So in making a data science project, we use, for example, a support vector machine as our machine learning algorithm. And SVM, for short for support vector machine, is used for non-linear data sets. I believe you are very much familiar with this one. And sometimes, especially if you are new to doing this kind of thing, you would be confused on what kind of feature transformation you're going to use. And this can be a kind of problem, especially when you don't have enough background on the different transformation methods. And if your problem is that kind of confusion, then this time, you don't have to worry it's because there is always a go to kernel you can ask for help and this is what we call an rbf or the redial basis function so this kind of kernel function is your default function your go to kernel function just in case you don't have enough knowledge of some other kernel functions so what is an rbf function there are actually a lot of things that we can talk, that we can discuss about a redial basis function, and we're going to have them one by one. The things you could see here are just some of the many wonderful things we can learn about a redial basis function. So first is that a redial basis function is the most widely used form of kernelization, and also it is the most generalized form of kernel function. And maybe you would like to ask me, why is it first and foremost widely used? And why is it the most generalized form? So these two can be attributed to the fact that RBF is very similar to a Gaussian distribution. And we know that a Gaussian distribution is always our assumption when we do a regression method. And actually, in regression method, we always transform different values, especially when there's great discrepancies between and among different values. So what we do is that we transform these values. So we can at least see a Gaussian distribution. So 
That is why it is the most widely used and it is the most generalized form. A redial basis function always functions for two points. So it can never be applicable when we are talking here of only one point. So for example, we have the point x1 and we have the point x2. So this is the point and this is another point. So using a function, redial basis function, we compute for the similarity of x1 and x2 and that is by computing for the distance between them. So it's always very relevant to ask yourself, how is x2 far from x1 or how is x1 far from x2? So it's always a question of closeness because closeness has something to do with similarity. The closer the points from each other, the more similar they are. The farther these points from each other, the more dissimilar they are. Make sense? So in mathematical understanding of RBF, this function can be represented using this mathematical expression. So we have here k for kernel, and we have here x1 and x2, which means the two points is equal to the exponential, the negative, then the absolute values of x1 minus x2 squared over 2 variance squared. So for us to be able to understand what this mathematical expression means, it's very helpful for us to understand them one by one. Of course, we know that these two are the two points. And here, we square the result. And then, here is the variance. The raw here is the variance. And then, this also represents, aside from being a variance, it is our hyperparameter. And you know that hyperparameter is very important for us to be able to also arrive at the kernel points. So as you could see, this first expression here is actually the Euclidean. I believe you are very much familiar with Euclidean distance between the first point and the second point. So it is also called the L2 norm. So I have a lesson on that and I would like you to check. It's in the deep learning mathematics, I guess. And that really can tell you the different norms that you have to understand so that you will be able to also understand how the different values are transformed in different techniques and their advantages and disadvantages. I suggest you watch that lesson. So for better understanding, let's have this example. So we have here point x1 and x2. So we're going to have the d1 and d2 or d1, 2 as a distance between x1 and x2. So the distance between these two points can be represented using this mathematical formulation. d1, 2 is equal to the absolute values of x1 minus x2 squared. So as you could see here, we are actually getting the absolute values because we are talking here of distance. And of course, by common sense, you would know that there is no such thing as a negative value when we are talking of distance. It's always positive. That is why we take here the positive or the absolute values. So this is the distance, right? Now, how are we going to represent this distance into a kernel equation? This distance can be represented into this kernel equation. So we will have k, which means, of course, kernel. We have just have that. Then we have x1, x2, then is equal to the exponential. So exponential here is actually a constant. And of course, you know that value of this exponential. And we will have minus. We, ha we have d12 then we have two variance squared right so this represents the kernel equation of this distance 
So maybe you would like to ask me at this point, so if we have the results now, what would be the implications of the result? So in RBF, we have one as the maximum value, okay? Don't forget one is the maximum value. The question at this point is this, what's the implication when the RBF kernel is one? When the kernel is one, that means that D12 is zero. Because D12 is zero, it means that X1 and X2 are located in the same point. So that means if, if we are going to draw that, we can say that this point is X1 and at the same time, this is X2. So there is no point of going further because both of them stays at the same location. And because they stay at the same location, it means that there is no distance to speak of. And they are extremely similar. And maybe you would like to ask me, what if when there is some distance between x1 and x2, what would be the value of the kernel? So in this case, of course, the value would always be less than 1. And because the value is less than 1, it can be closer to 0. And what would be the implication of this value? So it means that, as what I've said, there can be some points of the similarities between x1 and x2. That means when x2 is here, this point, than this point, then it could mean that it is more likely that x2 is dissimilar with x1 but not too much when it is at this point. So these are the most wonderful things about redial basis function that we really have to understand. So as we go along with our lessons, we would be still understanding a lot of things about redial basis function. What is this for? Why do we have to study this? The main idea of using kernel is this. Redial basis function is very powerful in transforming values. Since redial basis function kernel uses an exponent, this makes the regression or classification line more robust and powerful. After all being said and done, let's try this. Why is redial basis function kernel more widely used? What makes an RBF kernel a more powerful kernel? Please write your answers in the comment down below so that we would be able to have a very rich interaction of ideas and we can learn from each other. Do you want to learn more about this channel? Just click these cards. You can enjoy our data science courses for free like machine learning essentials, deep learning mathematics, the different data science tips, the different data science algorithms, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn and upskill for free.